Algebra 1, number 2.8b, we're talking about the inverse of a sum and simplifying, simplifying expressions with parentheses. The associative property lets us change the association of numbers to add or multiply them in different groups. And this works for expressions, too. The associative property of addition says that we can have 2 plus 8 plus 4, and we can group the 2 and the 8 together to make a 10. Well, when we have an algebraic expression, we can group the 2x and the 8x together, because they're like terms, and then add the 4. When an expression inside parentheses is subtracted from another expression, we can subtract by adding the inverse. Then we can use the inverse of a sum property and simplify. So take a look at this. We've got 4x, and then we've got a negative sign. Then we've got 5x plus 3 in parentheses. Now we can see the 4x and the 5x are like signs. See that? Well, we can do 4x and then minus the 5x plus 3. See? So we can do this 5x plus 3. We can do 4x plus a negative 5x plus a negative 3. That's the inverse of a sum property. And we can then do 4x minus 5x minus 3. We collect the like terms. 4x minus 5x is a negative x, and we end up with negative x minus 3. Now, I know this probably sounds really confusing, doesn't it? So let's take a look at this again. This is the inverse of a sum property. For any rational numbers, a and b, if we have a negative sign outside of the parentheses like this, it's the additive inverse of a sum is the sum of the additive inverse. So let's say the a and the b were a 2 and a 5. Then it would be a negative outside the 2 plus 5. Well, this just means negative 2 plus negative 5. See? That's all they're saying. So let's look at some more examples. We can combine the first two steps of that previous problem by changing the sign of every term inside the parentheses. And this looked really confusing, didn't it? What if we could get rid of two of these steps? Wouldn't that be nice? All right, so let's do that. We had 4x minus 5x plus 3. Same thing, 4x minus 5x plus 3. So let's distribute this negative sign to each of these, OK? so. If you remember, the inverse of a sum property says that we can just switch the signs inside of the parentheses. Remember from the last video? So that means we have a negative, and remember our friend the invisible 1 is there? So it's like saying negative 1 times 5x, that gives us a negative 5x, and negative 1 times a positive 3 gives us a negative 3. By this negative sign being here, it switched all the signs on the inside. This positive 5x became a negative, and this positive 3 became a negative 3. We collect the like terms. 4x minus 5x is a negative x minus 3. See? So we got rid of all this horrible confusion and just knocked it down a couple of steps by just changing the sign of every term inside the parentheses because of this minus sign in front of the parentheses and knowing the property of negative 1. When we have a negative sign in front of a parentheses, it's like a negative 1 times what's inside that parentheses, OK? Let's try this one. We've got 5y minus and then 3y plus 4 in parentheses. So we can distribute a negative 1 from this negative sign to each of these terms inside the parentheses. And all we do is switch the signs. Here's a positive 3y. That's going to become a negative 3y. This positive 4 is going to become a negative 4. We're done. Now all we have to do is combine the like terms. 5y take away 3y is a 2y, and we throw on our minus 4. See? Isn't that much easier? Let's try it again. Now we've got 3y minus 2 minus, and then the 2y minus 4. So there's a lot in front of the parentheses, isn't there? But we're going to ignore this part, and we're just going to look at this minus 2y minus 4, and we're going to make this minus change the signs of what is inside the parentheses, the terms in the parentheses, and then it's going to go away, OK, technically. So a minus times a positive 2y makes it a negative 2y, and a minus times a, mi a negative 4 makes it a positive 4. Now all we have to do is combine like terms. The green ones are like terms. 3y minus 2y is just y. And a negative 2 plus 4 is a positive 2. Isn't that so much easier? 
So just remember, when you see a negative sign right in front of the parentheses with nothing there, we can just distribute it and change the signs of the terms inside, okay? Well, we can subtract an expression that consists of several terms that has a number in the front also. It doesn't just have to have a negative sign and then the parentheses. There could be a number there. So look what happens when we've got a negative 2. It's the same thing as when we had the negative sign and we had the invisible 1. See? If there was an invisible 1 there, imagine now there's a 2 there. Same thing. We distribute it to everything and change the signs. So now we do it with the negative 2. So this x minus negative 2 with the x plus y in parentheses, we take this negative 2 and distribute it. Negative 2 times x, a positive x, becomes a negative 2x. And the negative 2 times a positive y becomes a negative 2y. See how we did that? We just did the same thing we did before, except now we've got a number there. And now we've got x plus a negative 2x minus 2y. Now we can combine like terms. If you have x and you take away 2x, you have a negative 1x, don't you? A negative x minus 2y. See? So whether there's a number here or just a negative sign, we can still distribute this negative to what's inside the parentheses. Do you remember when we did um, the distributive property and we had negative 3 times a gave us a negative 3a and the negative 3 times the positive 2b gave us a negative 6b? Same thing, see? We have a negative here with a number and it changed that a to a negative and it changed this positive 2b to a negative. We just changed the signs on the inside. That positive became a negative, that positive became a negative, see? And even if that 3 wasn't there, a negative times an a is negative a, and the negative times a positive 2b is a negative 2b. And it's the same whether there's a number in front or just a negative sign. We change the signs inside. Now, if you need more help, you can see this video's description for helpful video links that are in there, and there might be something about the distributive property or the previous video's link in case you didn't see it. You don't have to look for it. You can just go in this description and click on the link, okay? In 2.8c, we're going to talk some more about grouping symbols, about parentheses, brackets, and braces, okay? I'll see you there. Bye.